Hello! If you lived in the UK in the early 1980s and had even the most passing interest in the microcomputers of the day, you almost certainly had at least one book by Osborne. They made these very nice, brightly coloured and uh, cheerily presented books all about the birth of the modern microcomputer and various bits and bobs. And as you can see, they're all very nicely presented and pleasing to the eye in a way that younger people would enjoy. And also a nice clear read as well. This one is the Beginner's Computer handbook. Uh, I think the most common one was probably just the Usborne Guide to Computers. Um, I've got the Usborne Guide to Computer Graphics somewhere. There were loads of these things, loads and loads of them, and they're all quite interesting in their way. Very dated now for painfully obvious reasons, but there we go. But I found this on my travels once and was extremely interested in it because I had not come across it before. This is Usborne Weird Computer Games. And yeah, that looks pretty weird. There's like a sort of monstrous zombified skull coming out of the ground, frightening some uh, small rodents, which is nice. For Commodore 64, Vic 20, Apple, TRS 8032K, BBC, Electron, Spectrum, all your favourites. So basically, uh, what they did was got a load of very, very simple computer games and printed the source codes in a very thin book. Um, there were several of these, obviously. Um, this one being the one, well, has the most interesting title, I thought. Christ, you can see how thin it is. Look, you can't even read the spine. Um, yeah, highly recommended to anyone of any age. Computing today. We recommend this to all humans. Yes, thanks, guys. Without question, the best general introduction to computing I've ever seen. Personal computer world. Yep, everyone liked it. Even the Times Educational Supplement. So, basically, they wrote an awful lot of books about computers, as we've already mentioned. But these are really quite specific ones. Look, creepy computer games. All these sort of weird things that the odder kids might have an interest in. And I think all of us probably fall into that category. So, yeah. Yeah, the idea is you literally buy this book and then you type in all these bloody words and all these numbers into your basic compiler which all the computers had built in in fact generally that's all they did when you first turned them on before you loaded something and then you have a game to play but importantly they've broken them all down so you can see how it works look line 20 sets number of panics used to zero that sounds like something to be very useful in everyday life for most people, I think. 80, sets monster size, 21 to 2020, ask for answer and go to subroutine to deal with it. So the idea is, you can type in this incredibly short to basic game and it will teach you roughly how such things work. That's good, isn't it? So about this book, the programs in this book are written in a standard version of basic and there are conversion lines to type in for most of the main types of home computers. Hmm. The reasoning for this is, oh best beloveds, unfortunately all the different computers were slightly different in their implementations of BASIC, partially because of the different hardware and partially just, well, just because really. So you have to go through these and check for the symbols by the side and then change things according to the symbol depending on what computer you've got. So uh, they're just sort of basic geometric shapes with the odd exception of the spectrum which has a Star of David for some reason. I um, don't quite understand that. Anyway, the games in this book are very simple. They are intended to get you used to your computer and to the basic language by typing in listings, debugging them and seeing how they work. The programs do not contain graphics or sound as these vary so much from computer to computer but you can try adding these. But good luck, because we ain't going to tell you how. You can change and adapt the games as much as you like. I'm glad. I thought if I changed the source code at all, you would come round my house and smash my knees. Um, anyway, you get the idea. So, I was very interested in this from 1984. I just realised. Ah, of course. I was going to say there's no Amstrad CPC, which is one of the big ones, but of course, 1984, it probably wasn't released at the time they were writing this book. So that's a good reason not to include it. So, yeah. The theory is, somebody else has typed in all these at some stage and then put the uh, programs on the internet you can load up in your emulator, so which means I haven't got to bother typing them in. So that's fantastic. And I really want to see what these games are actually like just to sit and play. I mean, obviously we're known that, you know, they are programming tutorials primarily and they're not going to be the most amazing things in the world particularly not uh, Tower of Terror here, which literally fits that, like that is the entire source code. Amazing. Um, yeah, so let's uh, go through these. We're going to use the ZX Spectrum version because that was the computer I had when I was a wee one. And let's see what fun we can have, starting with Tower of Terror. 
try changing the pulse rate limit. Can you work out how to add more rooms to? Very weird um, skeleton, that. It's sort of highly detailed, except the face. Is it supposed to be the rotting one from the cupboard with a bow tie on? Hmm. What is the treasure of the tower, and how did it get there? Perhaps you can add your ideas to the programme. Well, I could. Um, alternatively, I could just load it in off the internet and play it and see what it's like. Yeah, let's do that. So, game number one, Tower of Terror. Your mouth is dry, your legs are shaking, and your heart is thumping. You've entered the Tower of Terror. Probably should have gone somewhere else. Press G to move through the rooms. Ah, there's a skeleton, then a ghost, then a headless axeman. With each fresh shock, your pulse rate rockets. Will you go on, G, or retreat, R, to recover a little? Think about the gameplay out. What's the time? You've only got until midnight to reach the top of the tower and the coveted treasure. Capitalised, that's how coveted it is. Watch your pulse rate too. Madness takes over when it reaches 150. That, that's not how the human body works. And nothing can stop you leaping to your doom out of the window. That's definitely not how anything works. Anyway, what is Tower of Terror like then? So, Tower of Terror, good luck! Why, thank you. You are on the ground floor in room one. The time is 9.10pm. Odd to put a full stop in there, but whatever. Your pulse rate is 50. Retreat or go on? Yep, this is going to be pretty simple, I think. Well, we should go on, clearly. You're on the ground floor in room two. Your pulse rate is gone down slightly. Well, let's go on. Ahead you see a H. Hmm. What is this H? Is it is it a chair that you're trying to represent with a lowercase h? I, I don't know. So no, let's go on. Oh, pulse rate has gone up. There's another H. Okay, go on. Go on. Oh, an S. Wait, what, what is an S? <laughs> I'm going to look in the uh, source code quickly, see if we can find out what this is. Um, uh, so, skeleton, ghost, and headless axeman. Right. So, this is a skeleton. Well, let's go on. Oh, no. I fell through a trapdoor on the ground floor in room three. Oh, no. Well, let's retreat and, uh, and then go on. Go on, go on, go on. Nope, headless bastard. Let's go back. Go back. Go back. He's chasing us. Go on. Go on. An S. Back. And back. And back. Go on. Let's go through. Let's power through the ghost. Uh, well, pulse rate is 69. Nice. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go on. Oh, we're on floor one again. Let's hope we don't fall through a trap door, because that would be boring. I'm not even going to tell you what I'm doing now. Basically, if there's something ahead, I'm going backwards. If not, I'm going forwards. I'm going to go through that H though, because that pissed me off. Pulse rate is 91, but we're nearly through floor one. I feel, friends. Fell through a trap door. What? How, how did we fall through a trapdoor on the same floor? Did that happen? Did we go up a floor? Uh, do you know what? I, I can't even bring myself <laughs> to concentrate on this. Ah! You are on floor one in room four. Well, it's a very simple exercise in a progressive system where you have to make one number go up whilst not, not making another number too high. If you're learning basic, maybe it's useful. But I'll tell you what, guys. It ain't any fucking fun. Game number two, Skulls of the Pyramid. Oh, my eyes are still in my skull. Ooh, not human eyes either. Somebody stuck some goat eyes in a skull. That's not fun, guys. Leave the goats alone. So, Skulls of the Pyramid. A mind without a body. That's all you've been since that terrible accident all those years ago during the building of... The Pyramid. Must have been a hell of an accident. It takes all your mental energy to satisfy the evil spirit master's demands. This is sounding worrying. Every day he forces a number into your mind. If only you could turn him off. You, what? You must will skulls to fall off the pyramid onto the numbered stones below in an attempt to score that number. I'm guessing the game doesn't really have much to do with this bizarre backstory. Press 1, 2, 3 or 4 to release a skull. You must use five skulls each go, no more, no less. Right, so it's five skulls I've gotcha. Score the right number and rid yourself of the curse of the pyramid. 
Okay, how does this work then? Skulls of the Pyramids! You are required to get ten for the evil spirit master who lives on the pyramid, because reasons. Right, uh, ten. Oh, so it's, yeah, so Bagatelle, not Bagatelle, a pachinko machine type thing. Um, so we choose one, two, three, or four. It drops five skulls, I presume we choose each time. And uh, we get the score at the bottom. That's fairly simple, I think. What's not so simple is how the hell do you get ten? Well, let's put it in at one. Oh, God, it takes forever. <laughs> right, first thing I would do with the source code is reduce the amount of waiting time before it draws another lowercase o. Oh, dear. Right, well, we've got two. So we need five twos, basically. So we'll just keep it that. Oh. This is one of those games that, I mean, really is entirely random, isn't it? You might as well just toss a coin at the start and say, if it's a heads, I win. If it's a tails, I lose. So actually, you've got a far lower chance of winning with this, haven't you? Because look, it's gone, it's gone to the right already. It's, it's going to be like six. It's going to put us over ten on this go. Ugh. Great. Is it me? Or was ten a very, very low number to get with something like this? Should it be like 38 or something would make more sense? Oh, it's so slow. Add another one. We're already on 16. We've gone hideously over. Ugh, oh, blimey. Oh, well. How exciting for us. And finally, the final suspiciously O-shaped skull hits a 3, meaning we got 19 rather than 10. Our rating is now 9. What a life we lead. So we just do it again till we get it right, presumably. Yeah, you're required to get 27. There we are. And whether you get 27 or not is based entirely on random factors, and everything takes a bit too long. But hey, at least you can learn how to make things run faster, or at the very least pause less while something's going on, because crikey, that took too long for that skull to fall, guys. Game three, Monster Wrestling. That is a hell of a drawing. That is super detailed, crikey. And look at all those angry people in the background. So, Monster Wrestling. Sounds amazing. Monster Wrestling is a sport for lunatics. That's put me off. Which doesn't say much for you, the brain in charge of this hulk of bone and muscle, which is about to take on some of the nastiest monsters in the universe. As brain, you must... <laughs> Brian, maybe? You must do a lot of quick and accurate calculations. You must work out the muscular effort required to hold off the monster, for instance. Eh? And this involves multiplying the size of the monster by the distance it is away from you. OK, I'm guessing you just answer some sums. If the numbers look too difficult, you can press the panic button, key P. You must then work out how much adrenaline the body needs to survive the crisis by dividing heartbeat increase required by oxygen supply. Dividing sounds a lot more difficult than uh, multiplication on the fly. Take care, though. Overuse of the panic button puts too much strain on the heart and will eventually cause a blackout. To live to fight another match, you must survive 12 rounds against the monster. Oh. Sounds like you can't win. No, oh, that's live, isn't it? Right, what's this one like? Right, monster wrestling. Size of monster one, distance away three, muscular effort. So it's one times three, isn't it? So I'm going to press three. No, not 33. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense in... Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So I tried to press the... Uh, I was going to say backspace, but it's kind of the delete key back then. That didn't work. Well, let's try running again. Right, distance away, so 15... Variable not found. Six, eight, went, what? 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 Run. Have they not converted this? Did they not read the conversion notes for this one? Six. Yep, lots of variable. Right. We're going to have to delve into the source code, guys. Blimey. Okay, I've gone into the 128 mode because I can't remember all the keyboard shortcuts that the 48k basic use on the spectrum. Uh. So you can just nip through the source code quicker on this. So, um, 80, 90, 404, 10, change RND, comma, 1, comma, to RND. Great, right, let's go back. 80 is the first one. 80, change RND, 1, to RND. 80. No, no, the RND, no, that is, that is correct. They have done that, yep. And it's been 90 as well, yep. And 400 and 410. 400, yep. 
and for 10 years. I actually, I think if that wasn't correct, the Spectrum wouldn't have accepted it. 580 should be let Z dollar equal zero. Oh, that's a dollar equals Q, not zero. Ah, there we are. Whoever has typed this in has made an error, I think. Right, let's do that. The beep means it went well. Uh, then 595. Oh, man, there's loads of these. 595. Right, we're going to skip ahead, and then I'll tell you what happened. Okay, guys. I fixed it all. There was one other error I could find. There was supposed to be a line 597 added, which just caused it to pause for a bit. Can't see that having made a great difference. But right, let's run it and see what happens. Size monster 3, distance away 5, muscular effort 15. Yes! Monster kept at bay! Size monster 3, distance away 12. 3 times 4 is 12. 7 times 4 is 28. 8 times 9... Oh, what is that? Uh, 72, isn't it? No, yes, 72. Oh, yeah. 8, 8's 64. Oh, it's just timed tables, isn't it? Well, we've kind of guessed that, I think, really. But, um, yeah. We can keep this monster at bay pretty much forever. Let's press the panic button, because we can't work out that's 100. Oh, times 120, no? All right, panic button, what happens? Heartbeat increase 16. Oxygen supply 8. So, what did we have to do now? Um, dividing the heartbeat required by oxygen supply. Oh. Nope, me reading the instructions has taken too long, and we've been crushed to a pulp in the monster's huge arms. You survived eight rounds. Uh, well, we were supposed to have survived twelve. Can't help but feel we could have done that quite easily if we'd just stuck with the incredibly simple mental arithmetic. But there we are. Well, that's some numbers then. Do 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 do. This is a non-copyright infringing version of the Jaws theme. Jaws! Mmm. People do taste yummy, don't they just? But with the hunter forever on your tail, it's difficult to get close enough to catch them. You are J for Jaws, and you can move around by pressing keys A, Z, N and M. OK. See how many peas, people, you can eat before H catches you. H is, oh, H Hunter, not human, right. There's a snag, of course. Each time you succeed in catching and devouring a delicious human being, you get so excited you can't remember which key does what. That sounds very strange. So you play as the killer shark, Jaws. There's a PlayStation 2 game about that, wasn't there? Anyway, what's this one like? Wow, this screen just looks like it's trying to say Jaw in an insane manner. Right. This is currently paused. I'm going to unpause it. I have the keys ready, A, Z, N, and M, and we are go. Dun, 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 dun. Eat the human. Yay, we ate the human. He moved. Hooray. What was the P again? I've forgotten what the P was. Oh, P is ju just... What, what? So what is the H? What? Now I've confused myself. Oh, you're not supposed to get caught by the A. Oh, bloody hell. Right, A is down, despite it being higher than the... What? Oh, crikey. There we are, we got a P this time. And then what happened? Did the H teleport on us? What's, what's going on? Where are we? What's occurring? Has it gone funny? Is this ended? Is this like Pac-Man written by a maniac? Right, let's run it again. Yep, don't show me the source code. I've seen enough of that today. Right. So avoid the H. I just thought the H was human. I've totally forgotten the instructions. Here we are. P. We've got it. Oh, the P's are uppercase this time. How amazing. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah. The controls have indeed randomised. Amazing. Uh, your, yep. So that must be up. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yay. Right. The, oh, oh, the H has teleported onto us again, I think. What? What? Uh, game ends now. <laughs> that was certainly an experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't really think... Oh, you've been caught. Well, we're going to be caught now? What's going Why can't I... <sighs> no. Thank you, stop statement. You have saved the day. Don't know what the skeleton's doing there. Try changing the letters into graphic symbols. Why not change the ingredients? Says a gecko or something. Right. Flying witches. As chief assistant to Super Witch. 
I see. Your job is to fly across the land on your broomstick, collecting fresh ingredients for her putrid potions. Ooh. You will know exactly what to collect each time because she transmits her revolting recipes directly to your computer screen. <laughs> She's very with the times. Ingredients such as tea, toe of newt, and B, brain of bat, flash past beneath you as you fly. Press any key to swoop down and pick one up. You must land right on top of it to do so. Take care, some of them could be the broomstick snatcher in disguise. He can disguise himself as a newt's toe. Impressive. If you land on her, you'll lose your stick. Luckily, you start the game with three spares. You must collect everything you need before you get to the cauldron, or Super Witch will not be pleased with you. Ooh, and you know what happens if Super Witch isn't pleased with you? She's really passive-aggressive. Right, let's give this one a try. So, let us please Super Witch. Two toes of newts, two eyes of lizards, three roots of ivy, four brains of bats. Sounds delicious. Right. Press return to play. It's not liking the whole return to play thing. Ah, we're going. Right. Go, Super... No, we're not Super Witch. Get the tea. No, we missed it. Oh, Super Witch is going to be so angry. Oh, the, the, yeah. Not the most responsive controls. Hooray for basic. At least we've got stuff moving in this one. Do you know what I mean? Some stuff is happening. Right, going to go in a bit earlier there. We could probably work it out by just which blocky position it is on the screen. Yay, we've got a brain of a bat. That sounds like an insult, but it isn't. Um, this this is going to be shockingly boring. Oh, no, I'm, I'm lower now. Now I'm higher again. What, what's going on? I'm slightly confused by this. Yes. We've now got Toe of Newt as well. Oh, yeah, we've got it really high now. Ah, so you can't really ever properly get your bearings. I think I've pretty much got a uh, hang of it now, though, except I've just missed that one entirely. So when is the horrifying broom snatcher going to appear? And how would you know when it does? I'm just looking at the source code, really. Gonna... Oh, you missed that one. That's a root of ivy we'll never get back. Go on. Oh, nope, the button didn't do anything that time. That's always nice. Where is the witch flying over? A land of equal signs and chevrons. Um, go for the E. Yeah, there we are. We're getting there. This is not the most difficult of games, but of course, randomly... Oh, bloody, I missed that one. Randomly, it may be the dreaded broom snatcher. No, the broomstick snatcher. I've just looked and read it. And I wish I hadn't looked, because then I looked away from the screen and missed the E. Nope, missed this one. Or have I? Yes, I have. Ugh. And they say games where you just tap one thing for controls came along with mobile phones. Oh no, guys. They were here before us. Please, get this bloody brain of a bat this time. It's annoying me. No! No! Go on. You can do it. You can do it. Which is... Oh no, W. What's that? Oh, is that the broom snatcher has got it? Is, is that what's happened? I don't know. I'll tell you what else. Don't really care. Hmm. I'm going to stop playing this now and never think of it again. Well, at least it told the kids how to get things moving along so it looked vaguely like movement, I suppose. And finally, the, the longest one by a country mile. Um, it really is a long old one, that. Glad I didn't have to type that in. Whoop! Micro Puzzle! This is a sort of mini-adventure game. If you've never played an adventure before, the object is to escape. That's not the object of every adventure game. Also, why are your arms so long? Are you Dick Jones when he's falling out of the window at the end of Robocop? Uh, really good drawing of an angry cat, though. Micro puzzle. What's happened? Where are you? Everything appears fairly normal, though you do feel a bit sick. Better take a look round and see if you can find out what's going on. Hint, try talking to your computer in two-word sentences. Oh, it's text adventure, or interactive fiction, as I like to call it these days. Well, let's see if... The, well, see how the cat is involved, I suppose. So, Micro Puzzle. If you're wondering why it's gone all blurry, we're trying to emulate the look of an old television, which you would have been playing this on, an old 14-inch portable, probably, back in the day. It's just plugged into the RF socket and the TV tuned into it for the lowest possible picture quality, because that's all we had. Uh, graphics artists used to take it into account, the way the colours and things would merge into each other. Not that that's particularly relevant for what is a text adventure. So, you're in a yellow front room, you can go you. I do that quite a lot, usually in food videos. You awaken. What will you do now? I wonder what's going on. Um, 
the east. Go east. It said use two word uh, sentences. Nothing's happening. Go where? Maybe just put in E for East. That's how you'd normally do it in a game like this. Oh, yeah, here we are. You are by a TV set and a recorder. V video recorder? One of those musical recorders that kids learn to play and play Jesus' hands with kind hands while they're practicing? You can go north or west. North. Why not? You're in the kitchen. Wish there was some colour in some of these games. I think they're probably written for a 16K spectrum or something. I don't know. Um, you can go south or west. Well, west. We just came from south. Okay, you're in a storage room. There is a thread here. Get thread. <sighs> Subscript wrong, 8101. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, don't tell me they didn't put the Spectrum bit in correctly again. Oh, God, there's a lot of different changes for Spectrum users. Yep, an awful lot. Hmm. Oh, hang on. I've got a plan. Oh yeah, C64 version, baby. <laughs> Somebody has kindly typed in the Commodore 64 version. So let's see what that's like. And more's point if it goes funny. Right, let's do what we did last time. We went east, I believe, didn't we? Did we go east? I can't remember. Let's find out. Should see the TV. Yep, there we are. We can now go north. And then we go west. And get thread. Yes! You have the thread. Right, now we can go west. Again, you're at the back of a hallway. Go west again. You're on the edge of a high table. There is a cheese here. A cheese. Not some cheese. A cheese. A massive wheel of it. We've got some cheese and some thread. It's all a bit odd, isn't it? You're on the edge of a high table. What? Micro... What? I don't really get the... Uh, is the idea that you've been shrunk down very small and you have to get big again. That would make sense, wouldn't it? South. Yeah, yeah. we're at the base of a tall plastic tree on the edge of a high top. Yeah, there we are. Okay, east. You're outside the open door of an oddly proportioned house. Okay, north. We could be mapping this, couldn't we? You're at the back of a hallway again. Oh, hang on. So, oh, go back to the house. Enter house. You're outside the open door. You do not make sense. Go in. Go where? Open door. Oh, it's already open, isn't it? Ugh. What? Bum. Piddlehampton. Nope. Oh, never mind. West. North. North. No, you can't go north anymore. Oh, so bloody! I've lost myself. Right, let's go east from here. Uh, go north from here. Right, back of a hallway. So south, west, east. Go east again. Storage room. East again. Kitchen. Actually, go back to the kitchen. I mean, the storage room. West. Oh, it is just east or west. Okay, east, south. TV set west. Back to the yellow front room. Uh, let's go west this time. We're back at the open door of a... What? What? What do we do? What words do you understand? Sorry, I'm going to look in the bloody source code. This will teach us. Um, oh dear, there's a lot of guff in here. Um, something about an angry mouse. Yes, you're looking for something called a maximizer. Ah, right. We could be confronted by a large cat. That'll be what the cat face is for. It all makes sense now. Well, kind of. Um, I cannot get this. You already have it. There is a big red button. It bites and scratches. Yep, I'm seeing a lot of text. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, the things it understands. Ah, here we are, right. The data for what it understands. Cheese cassette. Unlock and bun. What? Just, the problem is, you can't seem to actually look to get any more detail and stuff, and you just don't know what verbs work. So you can't really work out what you're doing at all. I mean, it's nice. I suppose, um, you know, the kids at the time could look at it and then try and expand its. Um, 
vocabulary or something, but frankly, you'd be far better off with something like an adventure creator program, like the Quill, which was very popular back in the day. Something like that, graphic adventure creator, something along those lines, I don't know, where you can actually, you know, use the basis of an engine that can already understand verbs and nouns and not just walk around in a weird loop outside the open door of an oddle, why proportioned house? Thank you, Dancing Skeleton, who's got a giant pin for some reason. So yeah, that was certainly some weird games. It's only 99p originally. Bloody hell, no wonder everyone had these. Yeah, um, they were pretty weird, although most of the weirdness came from the descriptions as opposed to the games themselves, I suppose. But uh, yeah, there we go. In Spain, this was known as, I believe, Mysterious Computer Games. And in Brazil, I think it was called uh, Terrifying Computer Games, or Horror Computer Games, or something like that. Or maybe I've got that all the other way round. I can't remember. But I'll tell you what I can remember. They're not really much fun to play, but equally not designed to be, really. They're designed to be simple things that your kids can type in and learn how it works and then massively expand on themselves. And before you know it, they've got their uh, TRS 8032K to produce a serviceable version of God of War. I'm actually trying to think of like a modern game format that could have been done on these that wasn't. Tower Defense, maybe? Mm, Endless Runner? Something like that? I don't know. I don't know. But. Thank you, Usborn, for bringing these wonderful little things into our lives. And I'll thank you to never make me actually play any of them again. Subscribe for more.